have somebody to control the board so they can uh, mute people in and out through the board, can no, control there's, the noise? There's, there's no board. The only choice here is that I can mute everybody with star five. But you can see oh. that also causes confusion. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm considering moving to another division of the same service, which will have a different phone number. And then the people, instead of having a Skype call group, we will give them a Skype ID that they can use to call the conference call themselves on Skype. Okay. I can't use Skype, but I don't have it, so I'm and, just using a regular it telephone. It also mean that on that service I can mute everybody out, and they'll have, we'll have a system where they do star one to say they want to ask a question, and then I'll bring them in. Oh, that would that be will, much better. Yeah. That will avoid the open mic because we, you know, we can hear people eating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two, two, or, two or three times there were uh, a man and a woman in the background. Sometimes we hear dogs barking. Uh, we hear very loud keyboards. I mean, uh, at, at least. It did drive you nuts, yeah. 30% of the time, the noise is coming from elsewhere uh, from our, us talking. Yes. Um, this is Christopher uh, yes, here. Uh, can I just uh, make a suggestion? Yeah. I have actually set up my own radio show or radio station on uh, Blog Talk Radio. And I have six days <laughs> open where um, anyone can come on and do a show to, to uh, okay. on, unlimited callers. and Well, actually, unlimited people to listen, about 50 callers. I'll and it's... Maximum of two hours live, and then one hour extra for the go- <clears throat> for the people yeah, that are calling. I'm, I'm familiar with Blog Talk. Uh, so yes, if any of you, if you, if you guys want to have a show and do it that way, I'm very willing to do that. Well, the other service I was talking about uh, has that those same capabilities. Plus, it has a free screen sharing. I'll take four. Oh, okay. So that now there's someone in the background slamming things and talking. Uh, so uh, if you're seeing star six and, and get off, you know, star six and close your microphone down. If you're not talking, uh, please shut your microphone down. Now, Chris, I also noticed yesterday that on Skype when it's causing trouble, when you talk fast, it, it started to break up. Oh, okay. So, so if you have questions until we can sort out what, exactly what the problems are, you, you just might want to ask your questions slower. And okay. I had I had the same problem too. It wasn't just you. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Yep. I'm, okay, I'm going to put. I'm on line now. Hi, Pat, hi, Patrick. Yes. I'm going to have to put put the Skype people on hold for just a second while I take care of something. Okay, I'm back. Okay, you start the okay. recording yet? Yes, the recording is going. Okay. Well, has anybody got any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I my my first time was yesterday, so um, I was kind of uh, swimming in information. And um, what would be the first step from someone who's just come to this information, what would be the first step that you would recommend to do? Well, take, of- take, take a look at your passport and see whether it's got you identified as a citizen or as a national of England, okay? Okay. Now, see, you want to be a national, not a citizen. Uh, and see... You need to try and check and see what what they did to basically get you to lose your nationality. Okay. Right. It wasn't the, the Social Security account. It wasn't the certificate of live birth. Over here in America, it was that damn stinking Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was my, set my... Up by... Oh, sorry, go ahead. It was set up over here by a socialist, a Unitarian socialist, okay? You, you told Basically you. a communist. Yep. Okay. That they used a sort of a fancier word, unitary or unit whatever the hell. You you uh, told socialist. Me. Yeah. Utopian. Yeah. So, Utopian. Utopian, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is what um, they try and do with that in communism, they try and take total ownership of everything. That means right. they take your rights and liberties totally away from you. Okay. And turn around and give you privileges in return. Say, here, we're giving you a privilege and a benefit. We're being nice to you. Yeah, you right. just stole from us. Right. Now, the confusing thing with the British, in my passport, has got nationality, British citizen. At the front, with the wording and everything, has got some point five dual nationality. And it talks about British nationals who are also nationals of another country. It doesn't talk about British citizens. This is what... Oh, and that, oh sorry. In number five, it talks about dual nationality. British nationals are the first two words. In point two... Citizenship and national status. British citizens have the rights of abode in the United Kingdom. So, again, they're mixing words up here. Oh, yeah. They're good at no, this, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. No rights of abode in the United Kingdom derives from the status as British nationals of British dependent territory citizens. British overseas territory citizens, British nationals overseas, British overseas citizens. Oh, my God. What a convoluted way of putting things. Well, it would it make, uh, be very helpful to look at the application for the passport because there might be some additional wording there. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check online to see if I can pull one down. Okay. I'll let you guys know when I have it. You can get on to another question if you would like. Yeah, uh, see, it's sort of like uh, over here, they got us under that uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And then uh, people never fully understood you're making a pledge to two different things. Yes. One to the flag, and then one to the nation. Right. To the republic. And so uh, it's two different things. The flag is not the republic, and that's what they've got everybody believing, that, uh, hey, wave the flag, and basically that's the republic. No, that's not the republic. The flag was for the corporation. It's a corporation flag. <clears throat> now, because it basically was identifying the 13, uh, over here, the original 13 uh, companies that made up the corporation, the government okay. corporation. But it was initially, see, we've gone through three different governments in this country. People don't realize that. How many? The first three? one, yeah, three. The first yeah. one was a non-for-profit government, and that went all the way to 1871. Then in 1871, they set up a copyright, righted, United States of America, and it's copyrighted out of England, okay, with the bankers there in England, and that became a uh, government for profit. Sure. Now that stayed in effect for thir or for about 70 years until 1933, when they took uh, the country into bankruptcy, and at that point in time they brought in uh, the communist socialist government under Roosevelt. See, okay. that's the third government that's been in power in this country. Right. But everybody thinks that we've only had one government. No, we've had three different governments, and basically they've all been about 70 years apart. Wow. Now, it's scary. I mean, how they've done this and just slipped it in, the people just never and then people are out there arguing all the wrong points they've got everybody looking in the wrong direction so the people are arguing off in that direction 
when that has no bearing on the whole situation whatsoever, the the source of the problem. Sure. And that's what we got to get back to is what was the real source of the problem? And in 19 or 1871, they brought in the postal, the dead money system into this country. And that, that came out of England also. And basically they set up the, the uh, money order treaties at that point in time too. Okay. And people did, didn't see how those money orders uh, were to be utilized and nobody ever took advantage of them uh, in the system. That over here in this country, they were establishing really uh, as the out for the people. They were establishing everybody as their own individual postmaster. Because when you read the definition in the law dictionaries, it does not. It says a public office. It does not say a governmental public office. It just says a public office. Well, you get mail, and you get public mail every day. So you're basically in a public office of dealing with as a postmaster with the public mails. Right. That's how you start to learn how to read between the lines. Okay. Now, the one, now, one thing I'm not... I'm not going to be able to talk about the um, the passport application form because it's all online and it's a little bit different to when you have a form in front of you. So um, I'll have to get one sent over to me. Yeah, you'll have to check, sort of check that out. And there might be some tidbit there that uh, you sort of need to take a look at to, that might be hidden away in yeah. the process. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he could read Roger Sales' book and see if he can find something similar within his system. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Take a look at. Uh, uh, have you gone into the website that they recommend? Okay, there's uh, one website. U S A Passport. Okay, the number four. Ed, E-D, dot com. And uh, he's got a video there you can watch or you can download it. It's about 280 meg. Um, that, that URL is coming up as server not found. Oh, you have a typo some, somewhere. USA, US. USA Passport, number four. Uh, oh, A, 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 USA. Oh, A U S. Or A A no A U S A U S. You're passport. right, you're right. Yeah. I thought it was Australia when it first was. Yes, right. A U S passport for Ed. Dot com. Okay, it's the next one. Okay. Okay, yeah, I've got it in front of me. Yeah, okay, okay. then that's a new one. I haven't seen this one before, actually. And he has an e-book in there. We we okay. could dro we could drop a copy of that ebook into the Skype chat for you. No, don't do that. No, okay. 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 Yep, I'll get that downloaded. Well, thank you very much. Is the Ed for Ed Snowden, or is it a different Ed? Um, I think it says Ed Snowden. It is? Okay. Yeah. It's for Ed Snowden since the U.S. took his passport away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it talks about the U.S. government has revoked the U.S. passport previously issued to Edward Joseph Snowden. Oh, it's interesting. Very good. Yeah, now, one of the key things, okay... Uh, I submitted taking my passport, and I thought that I could get away with this, but it, uh, uh, they wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> I took my old passport, and it was uh, uh, expired in 1995. Well, that's well over 15 years, and I didn't. Uh, I sort of looked at that, but I, they said, uh, send in your previous uh, passport, so I sent in my previous passport. 
And uh, they sent it back and said, no, nah, no, nah, you can't do that. you got to fill out a new DS-11. So I'm going to fill out a DS-11. Uh, I'm going to turn around and uh, uh, fill it out. I'm going to make it uh, expedited when I send it in. I'm going to have the postmaster, uh, uh, and I'm going to make money orders out to make the payments, okay? Okay. Uh, $140 for the payment for the passport, $60 extra for the expediting it, and then another 1995 for overnight re-delivery back to me. Uh, $25 to the postmaster for their uh, processing, and then uh, also another 1995 to the post office for overnight delivery of that back down to the post office or to the post po- passport office. So I'm going to put two more in tomorrow. But on the money orders that I'm doing, I'm taking off that word citizen, okay, entirely, and I'm replacing it with national because I don't want anything on those two money orders going to those two places to show, to say that I am a citizen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to put it down that I'm a national and basically – uh, I'm even taking off citizenship down for the account. I'm going to have it listed primarily as uh, U.S. Postal slash Treasury account. You dropped away from the phone, Patrick. Okay, I have That's my better. hand in front. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, for the account number, I'm just going to put U.S.Postal slash Treasury account number. Now, I got a bill from uh, Medicare, okay, under that uh, fraudulent uh, thing that they've come up with uh, for this uh, uh, paying this extra insurance or whatever the hell they want. So I'm going to do what that guy yesterday uh, was telling me about, taking the Social Security as the routing number, putting it in there, and then uh, for the account number, I'm going to take the number off the back of the Social Security card and put that in there and say, here, you go take it out of this account. Take it out of the lifeboat. Hmm. And I'll still make that a money order. I'm ordering up the money to them. And basically, uh, if these guys don't like it, come and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Uh, when I called, they said, yes, it can't be expired for more than 15 years. So mine mine was 2002, and so it's just within the boundary. Okay. But I better be, be prepared for that. I should, uh, I'm going up to Detroit, yeah. on, Thurs- going up yeah, to Detroit yeah. on Thursday. And so but I'm going to submit this DS-11 in as a uh, non-citizen national anyway. Okay. okay. Okay, I've already got one in there to where uh, I claimed the account uh, at one point in time. So, and see, uh, they can't take those accounts away from us. They're just savings accounts that like the bank. Right. Okay, just because you uh, went out and got a sex change doesn't really uh, take that account away from you. Not that I recommend everybody go out and get a sex change, but I'm just using that as a correlation, a metaphor, okay? An extreme metaphor. Yeah. (laughs) But the account still belongs to you, okay? whether it's a savings account or whatever, okay? It belongs to you, not to them, to you. And even on the Social Security account, it says that on the initial application or on the initial documentation when they sent that out. This is your account. It doesn't say it's 
uh, half ours and half yours or anything like that. It says it's your account. Well, that must mean I'm the owner of it, if they say that. Mm -hmm. But they try and infer that they are the owner, and a corporation can own nothing. And I've said that over and over again. A corporation can own nothing. Only the living can ever own anything, and only then for their lifetime. When they're standing upright. But these corporations and everything else try and put a a facade out there, pull the veil over the people's eyes, making it appear that they own it. And the veil is slowly coming down. Patrick, yeah. can somebody can somebody own a corporation? Yeah, people own a corporation, but they only get a portion of it, okay? But a corporation itself cannot own anything. See, the people that own the corporation really are the owners of that of everything. And see, we're the owners of these corporations. That's the shares of stock that we have at the DTC. Is that why they always show um, CEOs, CFOs, but they never show who really owns corporations? Yeah. Not public. And see, we're the owners. But see, people don't believe that we're the owners. Oh, no, the corporations, the government, they own everything. No, we own the government. The government is our servant. It's not the other way around, and that's what everybody has been totally confused about. All you have to do is say, I don't want to play in your sandbox anymore, and I'm going to take my toys and go play elsewhere. That's pretty much all that it is, okay? I took two in uh, money orders in this morning, dropped them off at the car dealership for two different pickups. I almost made a third one out for getting my mom one, but I said, well, I'll just wait. Not a pickup, but a van. And I said, well, I'll just wait until I get these, then I'll come back and get the other. But, uh, no, uh... And then I sent one off for a prepayment of $10,000 to the oil company, uh, rural oil and gas and uh, LP company. So I'm I'm running with it, okay? But if, you, if you're leery, just sit back and uh, 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 try and gain some more confidence. Read those documents that I told you to read, okay, to where you get a good understanding of why you can do this. But just don't sit back, because if you just sit back and wait for me to say, hey, it's working, and you don't understand what you're doing, you're probably still going to get in trouble. Okay? So you've been warned. Now, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Okay. Strongly recommend you get as much knowledge as you can. Because they will come and ask you questions. Okay, uh, I haven't really got too much else new to say. Uh, so if you got any questions, go ahead and start asking them. I'm a newbie here. And yeah. I have 
I have some newbie questions, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, uh, first off, I have uh, downloaded calls back to uh, June of 2013. Okay, two. Well, I wouldn't go quite that far back. I'd only go back until around maybe the end of January. Okay, good. That was my quest. That was one question. How far back should I go? So about the end of January? Who, who, who's saying take two? Yeah, the end of January. Okay. Now, um, I'm about to order my certificate of live birth. Okay. Do I bring that somewhere? Do you or what? Do I, do I need to bring that anywhere, or do I just hold on to it? Well, you hold on to that until basically you get ready to surrender it, okay? or to transfer it uh, with the Secretary of Treasury after you get uh, your uh, non-citizen national passport. And then you'll go in and order the closure of the uh, savings account and have all the assets moved over to uh, your uh, uh, national checking account. Okay, so the passport is key. Yeah, the passport's really the key item here, okay? That's what gives you your right of safe passage or your protections of safe passage and safe harbor. <laughs> Perfect. And okay. what about the, the driver's license? Do we do anything with that? Well, when you get your new passport as a non-citizen national, you won't need the, the driver's license, okay? You should be able to terminate that because that, uh, that driver's license is only required for a U.S. citizen. Uh, <clears throat> can I ask you a question on the passport? Yeah, yeah, somebody's got a lot of uh, background coming in. Yeah, that, yes. Uh, is that you? You having a lot of noise, Don? Uh, not really. I just uh, wanted to ask you a question. That's why I just touched on it. I, I think it may, it may be coming your line. Ask your question. Ask oh, us. yeah, yeah, that, okay, get out. The question is, uh, I'm going for a, not, um, uh, the statutory um, uh, passport for American national, non-citizen, and if they give it to me, then they, how much will they ask me for the regular fee for that? And then I would tell them uh, how to go to the national treasury uh, uh, to get the money and send a bill there, or have give me the bill had and a passport before. Yes, I have. Okay. And it was an American. I mean, it was a uh, uh, U.S. just a regular citizen. U.S. Yeah, so U.S. A U.S. Citizen. citizen. Okay. And I'm correcting it and tell him I want to get a non-citizen uh, American national, and if I'm granted that, uh, they give and it to gonna me. And you're going to want to do the money orders to basically go along with it, just like what I explained there earlier. Listen to the audio again, okay? The okay, information the, is in the audio that I've already talked about, okay? Okay, the money order. Okay, i got to do a money order to the National Treasury. No, you're going to do a money order, but it's going to be made payable to the Department of State. Oh, okay. I have to look all okay. those, get those papers, then, okay. Yes, you have to make your money order out to who it says. If it says the IRS needs a money order, you give them the money order. If okay. it tells you to make it out to the uh, Department of the Treasury, you make it out to the Department of Treasury. Okay. I just have to uh, uh, find out who... Listen to the okay. audios again, okay? Okay, I have to, okay. You're, you're confusing it. yourself in a lot because you're trying to think without... Listening and understanding. Uh, you you are correct. Audios, I'm just, okay? <laughs> damn, this is the first okay. new time for me, and uh, okay. uh, and uh, I want to get it correct. It's not a new time. You've been on here long enough to basically I know, know the game. But okay? I haven't. I know, but I haven't done any of this yet. I'm just doing it. I know. It. You need okay. to sit down and write some of these things down. Okay. Okay. As you I'll listen be... to the audio, write Again. things down. Okay. I got it. I got you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? 
I'm sorry. If if that if if you think that that's being a hard ass, I'm not. Okay. I'm trying to instill you guys what you should have learned in school years ago. Okay. You take notes as the teacher talks. But you're also given a chance here of having a recording of what the teacher's talking about. So you can go back and double check your notes. That's the modern technology here. So utilize what is at your uh, disposal, okay? Please. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I have one. <clears throat> okay. I'm in a bit of a peculiar situation in that I have a British passport. I'm in Canada, and I arrived here in 2012 on my way to South America, but I was told I have a permanent permanent resident status because I used to be married to a Canadian, and I didn't know that. So I've stayed here, and I've applied for permanent resident status, but I haven't got my permanent resident card, which means I can't travel. So I still have a, a British passport, a valid British passport. So what? But you are a Canadian national. Well, I haven't got my permanent resident card yet. <laughs> so. Well, basically, but are you? They're saying that you are a Canadian national. You were born here in Canada. No, I was born in England. I have a British passport, and I married a Canadian in 1998. And uh, I had my um, immigration form passed, and I had my immigration status, which the form said expired in 2008. But it seems that it never has because when I came into Canada in 2012, um, they stamped my passport saying that I was a permanent resident. They they stamped my British passport with a permanent resident stamp. Okay, you, and you'll then have I to said, go down to uh, the State Department there, or whatever department uh, they have their corresponding department in Canada, and try and get that uh, ironed out. Okay. Okay, that's the best now, I can tell you. Right. Now, the situation in Canada is that when you have a permanent resident card, you can still have a foreign passport, but you are considered a permanent resident of Canada, which is kind of a weird way of doing things. But um, I know, and see, that's where they want you to have dual nationality, and you cannot have dual nationality. You have to have been claimed by one nation and only one nation. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't owe allegiance to two. Right. See, that's in the Bible. You can't okay. have allegiance to two. Right. Because so I, I you, would be... because at one point in time, you'll uh, love the one and hate the other. Sure. And vice versa. So basically, it, it, that type of marriage never works. Okay. So I can still go ahead and, and, and do the British passport route and not, not well, say anything. Well, you're going to have – I would check with the State Department or whatever there in Canada. And probably it would be best if you uh, either stay as a British – national or you come over and uh, you renounce being a Britisher and say I'm a Canadian now okay okay you know the weird thing about England is that they force you to pay 250 pounds if you want to renounce your status and you have to have um, a jurisdiction which has accepted you for, for you to do that what you got to pay to renounce yeah. A, a British guy, you don't pack sand. <laughs> Take this and put it where the sun don't shine. Yeah, I was, That's I was what you poor. tell the British. 
That's why we ran the British out of this country, but they keep sneaking back in. Yes. Yeah, that that's I was, I was floored when I found it out. It's like God, you have to pay to get out of the jail. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's ridiculous. That would not be just the British, but well, the Vatican. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I can use Law of Nations on that anyway. I mean, these guys have corrupted all that stuff, so I can oh, use yeah. Law of Nations. Just give I read them a money that. order. Just give them a money order. Right. I mean, it's in the treaty laws. Right, okay. okay. The whole UPU basically is uh, under treaty out here using money orders. Right, and also the um, Declaration of Human Rights says that you have a right to denounce your citizenship or your whatever, your nationality, yeah. you know? Okay. Now, hmm. that was uh, put into place when the... Uh, uh, some of the people became a national, uh, uh, gave up, but uh, some of the countries were still claiming they were born in that country and saying, hey, they've got to come back here and serve in the military. Okay. Now, that, uh, that's what that was all about. And I know that the UK has signed up to that Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah that whole... That whole British island, basically. I'm I'm Irish, and basically we never did like the English anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> we sort of sided with the Scots, and the Scots weren't English. I mean, uh, they hated the English, too. Yeah. I understand why. <laughs> now you understand why. <laughs> Well, apart from all this, it was uh, there's a whole bunch of historical stuff that went down, which I didn't. I found pretty disturbing. The English, I, I would consider mongrel dogs. I mean, the aristocracy, not the not the uh, general population. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a side bar. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not gonna go into it. Yeah. There, there's 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 some other background in there, that I won't yeah. I won't get in because I don't want to offend anybody. Sure. Okay, any other questions? Marshall, you want to tell them what you, you ran into today? Patrick. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us about your trip to the dealership. <laughs> this well, is Pat. I just went in there and... Uh, uh, I was out there looking at a couple of vans for my mom and uh, checking to see if they were a little lower than what uh, the van she's got. And this uh, salesman came out there and said something. He says, well, I was walking back up there. says, well, uh, you want to get rid of that uh, cream-colored pickup up there and one of the black ones? And he says, well, yeah. Uh said, well, okay, we'll probably... Uh, Go with that. So I pulled up my money orders and took them into him. I already had them signed, sealed, and stamped, and everything. And I just handed it to him. To him, and said, "Here, uh, here's the money orders." He looked at. It and he said, "Oh, this is impressive." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, "Yeah, all I want is uh, you to process these through the bank." And uh, uh, said, "I have the authorization to do these." Uh, by statute and by treaty, and uh, then uh, and I said I could fill you in on all this information, and I went covered a couple other items with him about uh, this whole process about the taxes and everything else, and uh, so I think I've got a new customer as soon as uh, one of the, or both of these uh, money orders clear. Oh my God! He will probably be out here. Uh, <laughs> Pumping me for all the information he can get out of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, new, rec new recruit. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to hold on to them until they clear the treasury, and no, he, he's he's got to take them to the bank. Oh, okay. And have them processed through the bank. Okay. Okay. And uh, 
the local banks here, they sort of hate me in a way, so they'll probably be calling in the postal inspectors or Secret Service. So uh, <laughs> since I didn't get a, uh, a visit from the Secret Service on my $250,000 one that I sent to them today, uh, they might be coming down on these others to talk with me again. So basically, I'm waiting for them. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, my guns are loaded in mm-hmm. that regard. My law books, okay, the mm-hmm. laws, I've got them uh, stacked against them now. And they either have to show me uh, where I am wrong and why I am wrong, but there is an account out there, and they better show me what that account is if I have the wrong account number. Because I'm through messing around. Right, right. So you're in the experiment stage, and we're going into verification of the theory. Yeah, and I'm going to throw as many out there as possible. Like I said, one's going into the post office tomorrow, one's going to the Department of State, and then one's going to the uh, back to the uh, uh, that Medicare place. But I'm using a different uh, routing and account number. I'm using the lifeboat on that one. Mm-hmm. And you did hear back from um, the passport people then? Yes, I got my passport back, and I'm going to uh, have to send in a DS-11. Okay. So mine uh, went they in. Sent, they sent my old passport back, okay. plus they sent the picture back. They oh, kept, okay. They kept the affidavit. They kept, uh, let's see what all they sent in with that. Uh they kept uh, the DS-5504. They kept uh, my certified copy of my original naturalization birthing certificate, my hospital birth certificate. Uh, they kept my affidavit, and they kept a, a copy of my uh, fingerprint blue card identification card that I sent along with it. But they did send my uh, passport back along with the extra photo of it back to me too. Mm-hmm. So now I, I'll i just staple that photo to the GS-11 and uh, make the money orders out, take it into the postmaster and try and see if I can talk her into processing it through. So ours should be coming forthwith. Well, <laughs> yeah, if, if you had uh, uh, the GS-11 and you see my passport is expired, in 1995, so that mm-hmm. was, uh, what the hell is that? That's almost uh, 19 years ago. So I was over the time <laughs> limit. <laughs> but I'm going to mark out, uh, still on this passport, I'm going to mark out that uh, citizen or and citizenship or. Okay. Okay. And then uh, uh, initial and date that and... Uh, a couple other items. I'm going to go over there and say uh, uh, to where uh, it's got uh, my father and mother uh, saying U.S. citizen. Uh, basically, I'm going to line that out and say U.S. national and say yes. So I'm going to initial and date because it's got U.S. citizen question mark. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't say anything about U.S. citizen slash non-citizen national, it just asks whether you are a U.S. citizen. Well, are they inferring that that is the U.S. corporation, or are they inferring that that is uh, the United States of America? See, they, it's ambiguous. they're not clear. Yeah. yeah. They're not yeah. clear in what they're saying. If they said American citizen, like Abraham Lincoln and Stewart put in uh that Expatriation Act, you know right well what you're talking about. Right. You're talking they don't, about the nation. They don't want you to know. Yeah. So I guess you could line out the U.S. and put American citizen. Well, you might be better off just crossing it out, and then there's nothing left to the imagination. 
Yeah. I just like to mess with them anyway. <laughs> Whichever way possible I can. Well, this is exciting. Waiting to hear about the, the trucks. Yeah. Oh, and not quite one exciting. In. What? I had an exciting day, too. This Marshall, Patrick. Yeah, go ahead, Marshall. You tell them your story. What I'll happened? Keep quiet here for a little while, okay? Go ahead. Uh, I'll try, try to keep it short if I can, but I, I went into the, the two banks uh, today. Marshall, uh, one, Marshall, could you uh, back up a little from the microphone? It's overloading a bit. How about if I do it this way? That's good. That's good. That's good that way? Yeah. Okay. I went into two different banks. Uh, sounds like I'm getting an echo, am I? No. no. Okay. I went into two different banks. Uh, the first one was a U.S. bank, and I just was going in just to kind of feel them out, just to get my feet wet. So what I did is I just had the forms filled out, but I didn't have them signed or dated. I just had the EIN number in and the passport number. I had my all caps name up on the top and and the postal uh, address and, and four digits zip up there. And uh, I gave it to the gal, and I had made a call in earlier because I had wanted to speak with an older gentleman that had helped me on something else, and but he had retired last year. So anyhow, he uh, wasn't there, and this other gal had replaced him, and I said, well, um, could I meet with you in a half hour? And she said she'd be there, so I went in and met with her, and I showed her the, the items and stuff, and I told her what I wanted. I wanted 100000 put into my wife's account uh, that she had at the bank, and I wanted to make one out for $3,000 that I wanted just in cash. And uh, so I hadn't made them out or anything, and... She says, well, you know, these are very interesting documents, and she didn't quite know how to handle them, so she'd have to call some other people. So she was very nice and very helpful. She tried calling different places and trying to figure them out, but the more she read the documents, you know, she was asking, well, who could be the postmaster? And I said, well, you could even be the postmaster for yourself and stuff. So she was getting quite interested, and she had been in banking for 20-some years, and hadn't ever seen anything like this. So she said she would get back to me uh, either today, but she didn't get back to me today, or she'll be back to me in the morning. So that's where that one kind of got left. And so I went to another bank that I, I deal with, and I thought that they would be real cooperative and, and wanting to help me, but it was just like I threw fire on her desk uh, when I handed her the one for 100000 and the other one for three uh, three thousand, um, and I had it all filled out, endorsed, and I had made it out to my wife to put it in our joint account, and well, she would have to send it up uh, to the you know the their main bank because they're kind of a you know got five or six banks all together that they're under, but she wouldn't didn't want to keep it, and I says no, I says. I've already posted it, signed it, delivered it, and the stamp is canceled on that. Well, then she went and got the manager, bank manager, and he, you know, they they wouldn't even pick it up off the desk and stuff and and stuff. Well, they couldn't keep my valuable document in their bank, you know, that I had to keep. It. And I says, no, it's already been delivered. I will not take it back. And I says, if you force me to take it back, I'll go around to the night depository and I'll stick it in there. So it'll be re-delivered. I says, this is ridiculous to argue about this point. And so finally they says, well, they, they would put it in a safety deposit box. So I had to, to sign that they were putting it in a box and watch them put it in a box. And I said, well, I don't care as long as you take care of it in three days. No, they wanted 30 days, and they wanted uh, to charge me some fees and stuff. I says, no, you got to read the document and take care of it. Well, then they put it in there, and I, I left the bank. So we'll see what happens in three days. Well, that's two different reactions. Very different reactions. The first yeah. one was going on about, you know, well, it had numbers on the bottom, but it didn't have this magnetic strip that they could run it through the machine. But then she did admit that they could hand, hand do it. They had a department that would hand 
handle these documents and stuff. So she was admitting that there, there were some possibilities there. And like I said, it was completely two different reactions, and the banks were actually opposite of what I thought. I thought the first one would be, you know, all up in air and stuff about it, but it wasn't. The other one, my word, I, I just couldn't believe how hot a match that, that piece of paper was laying there on the desk. Was the other bank a smaller bank? Right. It was. Yeah. But it's, it's American National Bank, so they're hooked into the national system. As far as I understand, in order to be using national in their name, they have to be affiliated with the national banking system. So in the meantime, I looked up some, some numbers for... Uh, in case I got to go to the uh, OCC or, or whatever, or even to the U.S. Postal on the fraud and stuff, but I'm going to check the numbers out more tomorrow because when I tried calling them, it was too late. They didn't answer. Uh, and if I can get those numbers figured out, I will try to post them on uh, the group site if I can. So that if we do need to back them up with something saying, okay, prove me wrong. Or we call these people and we get these people involved in checking your books or or, or looking into this, why you ain't handling this. But i got to give them the three days. That's what the document said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, the so, three organizations out here that uh, cover this, the Secret Service covers counterfeiting, okay? The Postal Inspector General covers uh, post office uh, items, okay, and then you have the Treasury Inspector General's office, okay, so you can utilize all three of those offices uh, when uh, an FA bank does not comply with what you want, and then also uh, they will get in touch in a lot of cases with the Comptroller of the Currency, who is normally over uh, seeing all of these local yokel banks. The, the one gal even accused me of talking down to her and stuff, so it was just incredible. Well, that's, that's their cop-out, okay? They've been told that and they've been taught that, that you're threatening me. You're threatening me. And basically, that uh, that is uh, like in the courts and everything else. Uh, uh, that is their cop out that you're threatening them. Okay? No, I'm just enforcing the law. You stick with that. I am just going to enforce the law. That can't be classified as a threat. Well, I, I just comforted her by, by by trying to just gently put on her arm that I, I I'm not trying to upset her. I I, I understand her position, but I, I said, you know, it's it's going to be all right. The first one's always the toughest one. We'll get through this, and then the next ones will be easier. Okay. And I'll bring you lots of business. <laughs> now, you know what? You know what, Marshall? Now you forgot to tell him also, Marshall, that you took in that 48 pages. Of, oh yeah, uh, chapter three thirty-five with you too. Mm. Yep, I did. I took all forty-nine of those pages in. Oh God! At the statutes of large, and the other gal said on the phone to another gal, "Yeah, all these papers really look nice. They're really good, and he's even got information along to back them all up." <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if you, if there is a third party that needs to, like a sheriff or someone with, you know, some kind of authority to. Go in. The, the Secret no. Service will Secret be called Service. in. I can almost uh-huh. guarantee it. Uh-huh. Just well, see, check they, and they see double. whether they will check and see whether this is counterfeit. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but, but if you have all counter- the yeah, if you have all the correct uh, numbers, it should work. You know, all the numbers. Well, even up. if we don't have the correct numbers, okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Say we've got something wrong. Okay, uh, it still cannot be classified as counterfeit. Okay, right. if we're the original, how can we be a counterfeit? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. Then they have to show us the correct way yeah. of doing it. 
You don't you don't let them play their game on you. Okay, it's just like the threats. Okay, they try and say, well, you're threatening me. No, I am going to enforce the law. And if you classify that as a threat, you're the one that's wrong, not me. And you're threatening my rights. Yeah, I also went in there prepared. I took along my EIN number that I printed off from the, the website. I also had forms along. If they didn't like that, I, I could have wrote them one off the Social Security number. I also took along my passport. I offered to let them copy it but they refused to take anything more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you, you had a current passport? Yep. Yeah, he just got I, it. Okay. I, I went down to the hub, and I spent two days, but I got it at the hub down in Minneapolis. Oh, you, okay, yeah, you went to Minneapolis. Okay. Yep. And there is hubs around. You just got to look at the website. It tells you all the hubs if you click on the right part on U.S. passport stuff. Right. It gives and you a it, list. It, I don't think... I don't think there's anyone in North or South Dakota, but you know a lot of the other states have hubs that you can go to. Well, my impression was there were about ten or twelve around the country. Ohio doesn't have anybody, but I'm sixty miles away from Detroit. Okay. Yeah, and I'd the passport back on and what? And the passport that you got—that was the new national passport. I tried getting that, but I had lined everything out, but they wouldn't accept it there because we were at the public window rather than the private window. Oh, okay. so and he was, I, trying, I tried to exped- he was trying to expedite it, too. Okay. Yep, I, I, I tried to expedite it, but then they were trying to pull a quick one on me. Well, either I took the citizen one or, or they, they wouldn't give me my extra money or my paperwork. So I said, well, then issue it that way, and I'd deal with Philadelphia on the rest of it. Okay. So they, they thought that I was going to refuse to take that one, so I, I just took that one and ran with that one, and we'll go after Philadelphia when I get done trying to do these money orders. But since it's current, I'm going to just use it for a little bit right now and see if we can get these money orders to work. But. I guess yeah. I, I'm either stupid enough or I've got enough guts to just go in and talk to these people. And you know, I've been bounced around and beat up enough that, you know, I ain't going to take it anymore. Yeah. Now, one of the things, okay, when I sent that DS-5504 in, it went into Philadelphia. But my passport and my picture came back from Charleston, South Carolina. Mm. Wow. So, Very interesting. Yeah. So, so you just, I'll have to you see, but I'm going to turn around and I'm going to mark it up as a non-citizen national and take it into the postmaster and see if she's going to process it. And I'm going to have my affidavit and everything else in there with it. That's why I know I, I've got an extra affidavit. I, when I went down to the sheriff's office and had it, I had two copies, so... Even though I sent one in with it already, I'm going to send another one back in with this to make sure that they've got it in case they lose uh, tracking of it. And I'm going to send this one. uh, I don't know where the post office is planning on sending it, but uh, I'm going to call them tomorrow and say, hey, should I be sending this back to you in in Charleston or... Uh, does it go to someplace else? That's Charleston sent it back to me, and basically they should have all the other documents, so that's where I really should be sending this uh, DS-11 back into. Well, it depends on how they divide up the work. Maybe Philadelphia authorizes it in the... Uh... Yeah, we don't, don't, don't think that, Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're going to try and pass it down to one place or another within the system, and they were trying to see they had me because I was over 15 years. My passport was over 15 years expired. Right. But I'll call them up and ask them, okay? That's what the phone's for.
good experiences. Okay. Any other questions? They're definitely out there just trying to sidetrack us in many different ways, but there's there, there's bigger bigger things that are in, in control of us that, that can help us. And, and the other thing I didn't say is I did walk in with my papers laying on an open Bible to uh, Psalm 91, um, and they, they didn't see it, but the paperwork were laying on that, and I kept pulling papers out from underneath, you know, and the Bible was laying there open. So I also had that down at the passport center too. So okay, there's a, well, a lot of power in that book. I would open it up to the mark of the beast six six six. I didn't want to call the beast out. I just wanted the armor. <laughs> so, hey, Marshall, this is Steve. Did you did you say you went ahead and tried the money orders just with the DS eleven that you had to take because that was all they could process? The DS eleven. No, I. I... I, I I did a DS-11 and just got a regular passport, but I paid it with a credit card. Yeah. That was before we had these money orders figured out. But I got so my passport. You, do you use, do you just put 000 where it says social security number? Yeah, they, oh, they, okay. tried, to, they tried to uh, distract me from that too, but they, they no. didn't make that an issue. If you've got a social security number, go ahead and put the social security number in there. The social security number is not identifying you as a citizen. Right. Okay? It's okay. only a an attachment to your savings account. Right. So you right. want to give it to them. Huh? It's good to give it to them. Yeah, give it to them. Don't try and deny it because basically they will turn around and shoot that down. Right. So you take out the zero zero zeros and put in uh, the social security number in there. Okay. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, but we, then we can do the EIN, the estate number, or the foreign grant or trust later on the when we do the fifty five zero four. Yeah. Okay. okay. But uh, we will get into, uh, and then we will start getting in, and I've got uh, the template pretty much. Uh, laid out for uh, uh, surrendering these certificates and uh, try and close down this postal savings account. Yeah, we still only have to worship the calf temporarily. (laughs) Right? Well, we can utilize the calf. calf. Yeah. We just got to melt the calf down, that's all. (laughs) That's right. It's been an interesting journey that I've been on for the last six uh, six months. Yep. And I appreciate the family support that I have out there with all of you. Yeah. Well, basically, we're cool. we're knocking at the door in every which way we can. Basically, uh, that door is going to come flying down. I mean, really, we're we're like the Trojan horse. We've already gone through the door. Uh, now we've got to just bring it to a closure. Well, I did. I did go in there with force too. I, I did take my wife in there and another person along. So what I would miss, somebody else would pick up on, and and that too. So I, I went in with with more than just myself too. I had witnesses along of what was going on. And it's funny, they they put it in a safety deposit box. They made me sign a a slip that they made out of a box, and they showed me the box was empty, and they put it in there. But yet they kept all the keys at the bank. Mm. (laughs) So who has control of it? They do. So So they could unlock it for the Secret Service when they come down to look at it. There you go. But, but they've yeah, accepted it. They've accepted did you, it. Did you take a yeah, picture yeah, of it? They, accepted and then it. see, they're going to try and say, well, I've got your signature right here that basically uh, uh, you're committing uh, fraud or whatever. That's, that's fine. Worry about my... it, okay? We know this game now, okay? And those bankers, 
They see they're, the only reason they're trying to do that is because they want to control the commercial monetary system. And see, what we're doing is the lawful uh, American monetary system, the post office system. They want to keep utilizing the postal system of current, of usury. Okay? Right. And they've sold their souls big time in that regard. And, and we're, sh- we're showing them we're onto their game and we know how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. No, we're showing them we're standing over their game and we're going right. to stomp them down. Better way of putting it. Yeah. Well, she claimed See, they're, that I was the snake. They're the snake that has been cast down out of the tree and is under our feet. Okay? And that's why our flag is the one that has the snake on it and it says, Don't tread on me. Right. Well, your first banking lady, uh, Marshall, sounds like she could be a recruit too. Oh, yeah. I, I, I feel that she will get back to me, and I, I think I will go in and try to uh, do some to her. And show her how to do it herself. <sighs> well, yeah, I, I really feel that, that she was definitely interested, and, and she will be probably an asset to to try to process them through. Well, she will be an like asset, she... but she will basically come out of the banking system. <laughs> she yeah, won't right. be there later on. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's what be, the banks are also afraid of, of losing their employees. Right. They won't. She won't need the damn lousy job. Right. Because she, she was reading the document when she, when she was calling, and she even brought up a postal money order and said, well, maybe I need to take this to the post office. And I said, no. Right there is the document. You yeah, know, that's you're all supposed you need. to process this through to, to the Treasury. You're tied into the Treasury. You have an EIN number, and basically you are responsible to the Treasury. And this account is being held at the Treasury, so you're to process this over to the postmaster at the Treasury to settle this. Right. And we know you know how to do that because that's how you get the money for your loans. Now, they know what a routing number is, and basically they also know what an account number is. Right. That's so all see, she they was, really need. Yeah, she was trying to distract me with, you know, the ink or whatever that you have to have for putting on the bottom of checks, and you can go to Office Max and buy it. But that was that was a little bit of a deterrent. But I was listening, and I had to write it down what they called it. Um, Micro, M I C R. Yeah, Micro, whatever. Yeah, we were playing around with that uh, four years ago on the money orders we were trying to do four years ago. And, uh, but it, uh, you don't really need it, okay? They can manually punch those things in, okay? It's it's not that much hassle for them to do that, okay? Especially on something in this category, okay? It's like a one-time deal, okay? Now, if a damn clerk or, uh, one of the employees is sitting around back there, uh, can't take five seconds to type in uh, two stinking numbers. I don't know. And last fall, I had went to the main bank up in another town, and I had talked to the CFO up there. I says, I don't have a problem that you send it up to them and stuff, but you will keep it, and, and you will talk to it, and you will do it in three days. That's all I basically said. Uh-huh. And I was I was coming in there. I, I said I'm not trying to do anything dishonest. I'm trying to do it in honor. Yeah. Well, basically, the best ones are to try and go to Wells Fargo, uh, U.S. Bank, uh, several of the big uh, national banks, American Express, uh, uh, some of the key ones, Zion Bank out in Idaho. Uh, basically, I think they would process this thing through because I think they know about this, okay? Uh, and there's a couple others out there, okay, that are uh, major banks, and they deal with some of these things because there are other people out there 
that are doing this. There has to be a few other people out there. Well, like I said, the gal at U.S. Bank was the most helpful and the most interested in it huh. and the most impressed with it. Yeah. The other one, thought, I, I thought I was laying a snake or a fire right on her desk, and she would not pick it up. She yeah, one because they stuff. were taught, they were taught the the other stuff under their secret banking codes not to touch those things. <laughs> yeah, the numbers on the bottom of our checks is uh, called a MICR encoding, M-I-C-R encoding. Yeah. She said the, you know, the money order didn't have those numbers on the bottom of them, so they'd have to do it a different way. Yeah, and they can do it manually, typing those in uh, when they uh, do the wire uh, notification off to the Treasury. It's just interesting. It was an interesting day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah, I'm going to mute out. Okay. Any other questions out there? Yeah, I got a question for you, Patrick. Okay. So what happens when, say, you know, a handful of people that do this start doing it, telling their friends, and then, you know, where does the accountability, where's the, I mean, come in for the, the use and the purpose of, each person's use of the, you know, four billion dollars each. Well, they see they're going to get a visit before they get access to that four, four, four billion dollars. Okay. They will get a visit from uh, the men in black to see what their ultimate goal is of being able to handle that. I mean, you hear about these folks that win the lottery and it just destroys their life. So, yeah, you know, accountability. That's because they're very... idiots, okay? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, they never grown up, okay? I mean, it's just sort of like a drug addict, okay? A drug addict will eventually when kill themselves. So the idea is no drugs at all, then, right? Well, whatever, okay? If you need them, use them, but use them in moderation, okay? Hey, Patrick? Uh, yeah. Uh, quick question. Uh, when using the money orders, can't you use an execution order to the bank and, and order them to do the uh, processing? Well, basically you put it in and uh, if you... The best way is to basically get somebody else to deposit it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, once you have the deposit, mm -hmm. okay, Mm -hmm. then it's signed over to that bank. I'm thinking more of using it as more of an electronic fund transfer, which they have the statutes and codes to process. That's why I was thinking the execution order. They'll go through a lot quick. They'll go through a lot quicker that way. No, read the money order. Patrick's got it all right there. It says three days in honor. Okay. It's right I'll there, and that's but that's what impressed the other gal. Of all the information that was on the document, he was impressed with it. But I think the um, what he's saying, uh, the EFT is different. There's, there's not much paperwork. Is that correct? Um, yeah, it's usually like two sheets of paper. Well, that's all this is, front and back. It's only re- really one sheet of paper. Oh, you know it's, what? I'm, it's I'm just t- like a regular check, okay? Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's and what this see, other was. This, yeah. one, this one is covered by treaty. I don't okay. know what that other thing you're talking about is covered by. Unisol, we know Unisol Convention. The money dash order is mm-hmm. covered by treaty law. Okay. And see, that goes all the way up to the UPU. Right. Okay. I like that part. Yeah, and then basically it's tied into the Treasury because the Postmaster General is over the Treasury Department here in this country. 
He's over right. both the post right. office treasury mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the postal office treasury. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I missed the money order. I didn't see it on the website. Yeah, uh, oh. Tom posted it up there. If you go through uh, his emails, you should uh, come up with the link. Uh, okay, uh, when he, I'll go back uh, and check. Yeah. yeah, it's in the most recent directory. Okay, I'll go back and check that. And you can I did, play I did around get it. with that, okay? Okay. You can, you can modify that however you want to, okay? If you don't like mm-hmm. what I've got on there, change it around and see whether it works for you. Okay. Well, I've done the execution orders before, and they have paid off debt um, before. I mean, like two years ago I did that, and it worked. So I didn't know if that would help with these. What were you using, uh, the uh, Social Security number and the number on the No, I used a closed checking account, sent the execution order without recourse, and they took the payments and only had a couple kickbacks out of about a dozen of them I used, but... Then the bank started slowing down and not allowing that to happen. That's why when you do the UPS or or the United Postal uh, Bank, I, they can't argue with that. Yeah, especially when you use right. the money dash orders. And so right. That's where uh, that came out in 1871 uh, mm-hmm. under Correct. treaty. First okay. treaty was between the United States and Britain on okay. the money dash orders, and then mm-hmm. later on it was rolled over into uh, the UPU, well, a couple mm-hmm. other countries, and then into the UPU. Okay. And then that whole Chapter 335 is uh, a readdressing of all this stuff, and it even gives the penalties when these agents don't process them right. Right. Mm-hmm. Lots, of, lots of penalties in there. Oh, yes. yes. No, I I totally understand the uh, U.S. Postal Service that part of it, yeah, exactly. And and you're right; it's not like a bank going, "Hey, I'm I'm using your closed checking account, but you can't." So, I like that part, yeah, and, and see, it's part of a treaty where you, they see, can't you can't argue ba- against it. All of these banks are also postmasters. Oh, now that they didn't know. Every place that has a five-digit zip code plus a four-digit number, is mm-hmm. a post office, wow. is a postal office, okay, mm-hmm. in the postal system. And basically, each the head guy in each one of those places is a postmaster. Hmm. So wow. all these corporations are, and that's why uh, Lou, okay, he right. is the head postmaster for the Treasury Department. Okay. I get and that's that. why on my money order, I put him down as the key uh, mm-hmm. postmaster, but it's going to. He's not a postmaster general, okay? Okay, right. That is Donahue. Okay. And see, he's wearing a dual hat. Is is Donahue the um, treasury, or the, um, what do they call it, the... He is the postmaster general. Oh, he's the postmaster okay? general. He is okay. the he is also the postal master general okay. that is under a cabinet position to the president. Okay? Yeah. But as the postmaster general, he is the highest official in the nation. I imagine the he would the president be. is only a president of a corporation. Right. He's a nitwit. <laughs> What? <laughs> that can't be so. <laughs> oh yes, it is. I mean, I'm just getting it was in, in in there ever since uh, Bill and uh, uh, yeah. George Bushes and. Uh, oh I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Thank you very much. Now, ever since JFK, basically about the only one that really had possibly some. Co- well, two of them that basically had some common sense, were uh, Nixon and Carter. Yes. I believe that as well. Yeah. And they belittled uh, both of them in the Mm -hmm. process. They usually do that. Yeah, just like they did with Benjamin Franklin. And Mm -hmm. basically he was 
uh, one of the top mm -hmm. uh, knowledgeable people in this nation. But yet in the 1920s, uh, they turned around and uh, tried to make him into anything but. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically they just tried to destroy him. Hmm. But for the after his death and everything, basically his autobiography, basically that was the hottest selling book out here in the nation hmm. for all wow. uh, enterprise people like Carnegie and other people to basically get a good understanding of how to properly operate. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so if you ever get a copy of his autobiography, basically you might read it. I will definitely do that. Perfect. Thank you again. Appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions out there? Patrick, this is Nancy. Oops. What? Um, the newbie has another question okay. about our address. Do we um, forfeit our land address for a postal address? Uh, slow down a little and speak a little clearer, okay? I can't quite understand you. Uh, for our home, like our address, like I have a home address right now. Do, do okay. we forfeit that for a postal address at our at our postal center? No, you put down uh, your address, and you should you should have gotten mail from the IRS or something like that to where they give you a five-digit zip code plus a four-digit number. Have okay, you ever gotten that on any of your mail? Yes. Okay. Then they see that's the address that you use. And see, that is your post office number, your postal office in the okay. federal postal system. And so that is your post office number that you utilize. It used to be that you would utilize the post office number dash nine 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 eight which was general delivery. Yes. I read about that. And but I we don't need to use that one if they're giving us the four digit number. Because now they've individualized everybody out here uh mm -hmm. by where they're located at. Okay. And see you are a postmaster. Read the definition of what a postmaster does. You deal with the public, okay, and you process mail in and out of your office. Yes. Yeah. So you're a postmaster. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes too damn much sense. Yes. I mean, yes. all these other people want to run around here and try and uh, put... Uh, uh, request him to become a postmaster, you're already a postmaster. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Patrick, this is Nancy. I, I had to get off the phone call a couple of times because I'm taking care of kids tonight. Um, and, um, I'm hoping Celeste and Dave are on and they can unmute as well. And we are working to together as a team with your materials to um, to um, basically following the court trump card document to revoke all the public underwritings, I think. And also, you had mentioned last night about presenting... No, you don't, re re you don't revoke them, okay? You you don't? You're going to order the bankruptcy court. See, you've got a bankruptcy court case, right? Yes. Okay. You basically, and uh, if you have the passports or whatever, you can basically pass the book over to them to order the set-offs of those. You order the set-off and closure of those items. 
okay? You don't argue about the validity of them or anything like that. You just order the closure and set-offs of those items. So would you do that through the U.S. trustee or rather the, the Chapter 13 trustee? Did, would you do that with the trustee to order it? You would, well, basically you would just uh, surrender your passport or basically say, I'm going to uh, surrender my passport over to you so you can do the set-off. So you're giving them the citizenship, the vessel, right. to do the set-off. Uh-huh, okay. Okay? That passport is very instrumental in this whole thing. Because that's what gives you safe passage and safe harbor. Right. So they would yeah, there's some good information on that trump card when you understand that. But you need to read and then also understand what we're doing now with the passport. Right. Okay? Right. See that was old older information and basically we're just we're we're continuing to run, okay? We're not letting up, okay? Some of that right. stuff I haven't updated to uh, bring in the latest uh, stuff with it, but uh, you should be able to uh, see it. Okay? Sit down and sort of think these things through, okay? The passport is the key component here, and then you have the right to do a money order. If nothing else, you can take your Social Security number as the routing number and uh, the number on the back of your Social Security card as the account number and make the settlement because it's in the commercial world. Right. And right. Use, use your lifeboat to give you some life. Right. So Dave can use the back life. of his Dave can use the back of his Social Security number, and Celeste does have her U.S. passport. Yeah, and they're both, both, both of them. Okay. Now, what if Dave is the only one in bankruptcy? Could, huh? could, Nancy, could Dave? Dave's the one in bankruptcy. Dave's the only one in bankruptcy. You're right. But I can get a passport. But you can use the back of your social security number, which has a letter in front of it, and that's your lifeboat. That's your little boat to go yes. with your your national ship yeah, that you're going to get. It, it ties to your national ship, but basically uh, that would be the account number in the, for the lifeboat, and then the routing number for the boat is your Social Security number. See, a routing number has dashes in it. Okay? Does everybody understand that? If you yeah. have dashes in your number, it's a broken number. So that is a routing number. It takes you from this place to this place to the final place. Okay? So it might have one, two, or more dashes in the thing. Normally, uh -huh. two dashes is all that it needs for a routing number. But... The account number is normally a whole number, but it may have a uh, letter in front of it right? because that letter is now attaching where that uh, lifeboat is attached to, to the mothership, okay? Just mm -hmm. like you go out on uh, the down to the pier, okay, and you see all these little boats down there, sailboats, whatever. Most of them all have a whole number, and normally the whole number has a letter in front of it, or a couple letters. Could, they're happen. not a ship. They're just a boat. Patrick, could are they possibly, when they turn in the passport, also turn in a money order that says uh, full value for the settlement? No, you do a couple things at, at a time, okay? Okay. Get, yeah. 
get some funds out so that you understand how the process works, okay? Don't try and jump the gun, okay? okay. You're at the starting line. You can't finish the race until you've run the full 440 yards. You can't go from the starting line and hop right over to the finish line. Okay. Right. Okay? Because you need to have some process of getting the understanding so that when you do come out, you can protect yourself. Right, right. Okay. You have to earn the right. Well, you have to gain the knowledge, okay? And you just don't gain the knowledge overnight. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm trying not to be too much of a philosopher here. <laughs> basically, philosophy does come into play in this. Yeah, we need it. I think the philosophy is good. I think it's good to have, to work out and gain the knowledge so you can protect yourself when you come out. Yeah. And then also okay. by doing that, you sort of work through some of your angers and everything else, and uh, you let them dissipate, okay? I know a lot of people are upset about this whole thing. And... Uh, you need to take time. You need to take a couple deep breaths and let some things go. You can't take it all with you. That's just like <laughs> what I said. Uh, basically, I'm going to turn around and do the money order. Uh, but all they wanted was 140 But I said, hell, if I'm going to do the money order and I've got the funds there, I might as well go the whole ball of racks. I'll put the extra funds in there. Uh for expediting it uh, for the $60 and also uh, for an overnight uh, delivery as soon as they can get it back to me for another nineteen ninety-five. Hell, I don't have it in my back pocket right now, so basically I might as well put it to use somehow. Even though they're going to get it. What the heck? Yep. So when you uh, hand them their, that you when you hand them hand them, them, them the trustee the passport um, to um, settle the account to set off the account. The trustee is going to take that passport and write down Not the relevant... Not necessarily the trustee, okay? You can tell the trustee that you're going to put this in and see what he does. Okay, good. Yeah. Say, I've got my passport here, and I am ready to surrender it over to the court to make the settlement. What do you want to do? So a phone call might work. The other thing is you can put a stay of action in against it, okay? They are bringing yeah, about yeah. a counter charge against them. And you're coming in under your protection of your passport. But utilize that passport. Like I said the other day, when that one girl was in uh, uh going into a parole hearing. As soon as they heard the word passport, they took a completely different outlook on the whole thing. Could you go over because that again? Because there is not supposed to be any debtor prisons in the world. The funds are out here. Right. Could you go over that situation again, Patrick? The, the Not girl. really. 
the girl with okay, the passport. Okay, all she did was basically bring up the word passport in her hearing. And basically the, the uh, hearing took a complete turnaround. That was the end of it. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Yes. Utilize the word passport. If you don't have one, say, I want to uh, stay this action until I do get my passport. Uh Uh-huh. Because it's the passport that will give you your protections. And you have a right to have a passport. Right. Patrick, I would think this would work whether the house has been sold or not. In this case, the house has been sold. So they're occupying the property. They're maintaining possession, and they have for over a year and a half. And so um, handing over their passport is a whole other game because everything that's been done so far is only a stalling strategy and it hasn't worked and they continue to commit fraud. But I think when you put the passport in, it changes the name of the game and they can't act out and just... Yes, you're going to bring something different into that court that basically now the judge is going to have to look at it from a different aspect. Right. Okay. Now, has somebody trespassed upon you and basically uh, not told you what, uh, how to set this thing off previously? And the bank did that. They didn't tell you how to set this thing off. Mm-hmm. And all you needed was that passport. So basically that is part of the fraud. They never told you the whole story. And that's what a lot of these banks are totally afraid of, is that people are starting to wake up to their banking frauds. Right. And also the courts are starting to get scared about that, too. Well, without the passport strategy, they just basically roll over you and, you know, don't listen and make, they just do what, you know, it's institutionalized fraud and they're committing fraud. But with a passport, I would think it would change the whole, the whole um, outlook. Yes. Outlook and the whole game, the whole game that they're playing. So, Lester, Dave, do you guys have any questions so far? Uh, We're new. We're new. But do you have any questions? Where exactly would we take? Would we have to wait for the 321 hearing or with the trustee? Or where would we? No, That's a great you idea. never wait. You never wait. You attack. Huh. You put things into that court constantly. Burning match theory. Yeah. You don't sit around. You hand it off back to them. You make them make a move. So do okay? We... You sit and wait, and basically they will outweigh you. Sure. So we you just never around... do that. Okay, building, you've got to be aggressive, okay? And that's what a lot of people, they're aggressive at the wrong point in time. But if you stand your ground, okay, and you constantly keep coming back at them, they're the ones that are going to back down. Because you'll wear them down. But who at the bankruptcy building, court building, give them our passport and say the day the game has changed? The trustee. Have you met with the judge or the trustees? No, it no. just was the trustee. Oh. 
Okay, just inform the trustee that you're going to that you are uh, either you have your passport or you're going to surrender that passport to the court. Let him know. Okay. That's great. That's great. And then yeah, also learn this other stuff. Listen to these audios and everything. And get the understanding about how to use the the money orders. And you can either use your Social Security account with your number on the back of your uh, 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 Social Security card as the account number for that lifeboat to save your life. That's what lifeboats are for. They're to save your life. That's why they're called lifeboats. This would be saving our life. Yeah, so when the ship is sinking, basically you hop in the lifeboat. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, We're the ready Titanic. For that. Yeah, the Titanic. Think about it. The people that drowned were the ones that stayed on the ship. That's a good metaphor. There's a whole bunch there, of them out there. Is there any point with uh, when you you say suggest also use the money order? So maybe uh, Celeste and Dave, you start off at the 341 hearing and you have your passport and you you make you, your you stand. You sort of feel them out, okay? You throw yeah. a jab here, you feel them out. You throw a jab there, you feel them out. You're you're in a boxing match, okay? So you're you're feeling out. Where can I throw the punch that is going to knock this guy out? Okay. So you throw out the passport. They see you're uh, going to utilize your passport to do the setup and see what their reaction is. Okay. Okay. You can even use language like I'm passing the book to you. I'm passing my passport. Yes. I'm passing my bank account book to you, my passbook yes, account I'm book passing, to you. I'm passing, doing a uh, postal passbook, passing the book obligation over to you, utilizing the, pass, uh, the passport. And give them the page of definitions. Or hand them over your certificate of live birth or hand them over... Uh, uh, whatever instrument they want, the Social Security account. Say, here, I'm passing this over to you. You take it out. You settle it. You know, you can do that with the IRS to do your taxes for you. You know, uh, Patrick, I got it. I got to pass it over to them. Okay? Pass you were saying? Go ahead. Yeah, I got two frivolous filing five thousand dollar frivolous filing charges against the I uh, from the IRS when I tried to pass over my I passed my Social Security uh, bond account whatever it is my Social Security number obviously I didn't have the passbook because I didn't know about the passbook and they they just completely ignored me and the IRS you know went after me with these two penalties so you gotta you gotta feel them out and you gotta know what you're doing. Yeah, and you gotta read what they say. What do they want? Okay, they want you to send that uh, payment stub back with what? A oh, check yeah. or a money, money order. order? They tell you what to do. Right. Right. See, this is all right covered in that chapter 335. It's a heavy read because it's 48 pages, but it, it, a lot of the information is all there because they consolidated everything from the post office, from the original setup, pretty much into the, all the way up to 1873 two time frame into that one chapter under the new government the for profit government 
utilizing the postal monetary system instead of the post office system. So using this, it's really not necessary now to use the old court trump card because you're not really you don't need to go through all this effort to try to revoke the underwritings or allege conspiracy to defraud with counterfeit instruments because no, you're just see. walking through the front door. Yeah. The you the trump card is normally best to be utilized if you've got uh a mortgage coming due right now, okay? But see right. you've already uh, they've already sold the house on you, and now you're trying to go out at them a different way. Now use your lifeboat or your passport, and also uh, use the money orders. Right. Okay. Right. That's great. Okay. Okay. Just listen Thank to you. these audios. Read the documents. Okay. Okay. Okay, later. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Pat, uh, <clears throat> just a comment uh, in relation to this gal that has lost her house. Um, it's on a different vein, so I'm just going to make the comment so you can at least think about it. Um, it came to mind that these money, money orders and or whatever justifiable bond or compensation can be done – on the court case that actually foreclosed, which in California it's an unlawful detainer, uh, every one of them are less than $25,000. And I found the code in California that says that you pay the bond off or whatever <clears throat> has been posted by the opposing party that is looking to foreclose and take your property away. If it's uh, less than $25,000, once you pay that under double jeopardy, they can't come back and try to do it again to you after that. So you get your uh, your property free and clear for twenty for less than twenty five thousand dollars. That was all I wanted to say. But, yeah, but uh, see, they've already sold the property, okay? And they're uh, trying to be evicted from the property right now, and they've got them sort of in a standstill in uh, a bankruptcy action, from the way I understand it. That's right. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference if there's a that. It's mandated that when they bring a case that uh, – I can't remember the exact bond uh, other than uh, a value bond. They have to post the value of that court case as to why they are taking it out of there. What would satisfy that court case as to have that court case go bye-bye? What I found out uh, – well, there's a couple different ways, but I'm not going to take over the call with this thing. But in the first manner that you're dealing with, you satisfy the bond. You go down to the uh, – they call it the levy officer <clears throat> after you go to the uh, the clerk of the court as to post the bond that is the value that was placed on the case. It satisfies that. You get a writ of execution that is delivered through your hands down to the levy officer at the sheriff's department, and everybody's satisfied, and the banks can't do anything about it. They can't do nothing about it. Because you satisfied what they were asking for by paying the amount that was posted at the court case. Which yeah, is well, that's the great. Okay, yeah, so you terrific. take the money order, you go down there, and you pay it off. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was saying. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what I was trying to say here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Where Thanks. do you Chris. find the levy? Where do you find a levy officer? Is that in the court somewhere? That is the uh, authorized party in the sheriff's department for the county that actually will act in the capacity of the authorized party to, to levy as to sign off the paperwork for the grunt uh, piglets to go out and take you out of your house. Right. So it's the levy officer within the sheriff's department that once you pay the bond off for the court case, and if there's no bond on the court case of what we're finding out in California, is this that that means that there is nothing you need to post. And all you need to do is go to the clerk's office and go ahead and, and show the difference and ask for – it's called an undertaking. Uh, if you go look it up in your state, 
you're filing for an undertaking. That means that you're willing to pay off the debt as to have the case go bye bye. If there's no money alleged, even if it was a hundred bucks and you paid the hundred bucks, satisfies the debt. That means the clerk of the court has to. It's mandated. They have to go ahead and take the undertaking. You pay off the bond. It satisfies the, uh, the 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 clerk of the court. Therefore, the court case goes bye bye. Double jeopardy cannot come back and bite you in the butt on this one. And then the writ of execution under the undertaking that you just got them paying off the bond gets delivered to the levy officer. If they satisfy their uh, their paperwork in the sheriff's department, and no other action can occur. We're in California. <laughs> no, it's uh, a <laughs> no. Th- this should be true. It's a uh, sister state law. This is uniform. It should be uniform in the CCP everywhere in the United States. But you are in California, right? We're in California. Right. Okay, so that's well, great. there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. You you got it in the bag. The other one wow. is. That, the other one that I found this week that will help you, and I'm Pat, I, I'm sorry that I'm getting a little off. I didn't mean to get uh, into no, the. No, no, that's okay. Hey, hey, why don't you guys get with Chris right. and help Chris a little? Throw, if you got a little extra fund, Chris could use them. Throw them his way, and he will help you. Okay. Well, okay, the other. How do we the, contact Chris? Who's Chris? Well, uh, Tom, Tom's got all that information. Tom's got all that information. I don't. I don't. I only have your Skype ID, not your phone number. But you okay. Can, you um, can send. You can send me that, and then I can just uh, give it over to them. No, I, I can give it to to them right now. It's learn okay. law. Learn law. That's learn law at earthlink dot net. Just give me a contact. Hey, I was on the call. Just that much is enough. The other document that I found is what we've been missing all these years, folks. I opened up my paralegal book, and can you believe it? I opened it up to the orders of probate. The orders of probate forces any commercial venue into probate, of which once you have your estate or your uh, understanding about being the decedent, just like what Patrick is talking about, the orders of probate forces that court case out of that venue of commerce and forces into probate, and it forces all the parties that are creditors as to prove up under the burden of proof from the court's point of view under that estate and that probate as to adjudicate it further. And if they don't prove up in a probate, they have nothing, and the court case goes bye-bye anyway. So you got two different ways right now that you can deal with it without the, without the passport. This is separate from the passport, okay? But I just wanted to throw that out there because I know people are hurting out there, and my research is taking me in different directions. Uh, I've got this information on my own. Nobody else has got it, so you guys have got a gift tonight, okay? That's a great gift, Chris. Oh, thank you. I think what we'll do is we'll do the passport and the whole thing in in bankruptcy court and, and, and seal them out, as Patrick suggested, take some little steps at a time and hold they'll hold their ground and then um we'll see where we land because there's also an unlawful detainer court case right now that's on hold because of a stay so this is the this is the underpinnings for the for well, the I, uh, I, would, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste the breath uh to take these actions or at least prepare the paperwork as to have this happen. Um, right. If you if you actually pay off the bond that they posted, if they didn't post, uh, post any bond, what's going to be really ridiculous for the bank? Now, the bank is saying, well, you we, we just got done selling this back to ourselves for $350,000, but we're bringing an issue against you under limited jurisdiction, which is the only way they can do an unlawful case outside of Liz Pennant and or bring in a full-fledged trial. So what they do is they sneak in there, and there's, a, uh, there's an IRS code that says that um, if they bring any case that's less than $25,000, it doesn't have to be reported to the IRS. Wow, that's major right there. But – 
when you actually say to the clerk's office, I'm ready to pay this this value bond that's been placed on this case here right now and uh, do the undertaking paperwork for the state of California as to do a writ of execution as to have the property returned to you. That has nothing to do with the deed. It has nothing to do with any other squabble. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the, the promissory note. What it has to do is you getting yourself in the safe harbor. Okay, back. so they they get the whole house back. Yeah, and they can't do ju- double jeopardy. Right. They can't come back after you after you pay the bond out because they posted a bond. Same issue can't be re adjudicated. Great. That's right. You're right. And you know so, that these banks are not going to post too big a bond. They will try and post the bare minimum because they know that you won't know about that. That's right. Yeah, so they may post it. It may only be a hundred dollars that they post on a bond on the whole damn deal. Wow! And just the opposite right. side, if you've already secured your uh, your Social Security, I'm going back in in our work with Pat is when you secured it with an SS4, retired the Social Security. Now it's a decedent. Now it's acknowledged by the world, including the IRS, that is a decedent. When you walk into the court, the the other avenue is is that. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Uh, Judgey Poo, and this is without uh, – I'm giving you different remedies that you can do here. This is without the, the, the passport. You walk in there. You file at the clerk's office in order to remove it from c- commercial venue because it's an estate issue into probate. Now it stops all the commercial fast-track crap and places the burden of proof – for the creditors as to put their claims in and their audited materials as to show that they have adjustable cause to be de- dipping into that estate. These are these are huge. And I just I just discovered these things this last couple of weeks. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, if I was you That's girl, great. okay, I would check get with Chris, okay? Yep. Absolutely. He's got some good information there that basically will help you immensely in in this situation. Yes, it will. That's tremendous. Okay. And And just learn law at earthling.net. Yeah, these are exceptions to what Patrick is talking about, but it follows in sync with what we've already laid out in the months and years in the past, that if you have already secured your Social Security, you've got an SS4 retired the Seton's account, all you need to do is do an order for probate, walk in there with the new estate number, boom, the court has to stop every little bit of action because it's a probate issue at that point. See, so you're the anyway, executive officer of the estate, too. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right, Patrick. And there, I, I'm not going to talk about all the paperwork because I didn't mean to take up the whole call here. Mm. And um, it can happen very easily with everything that I've found out. But the order to probate, that means that even if you didn't file your SS4 to create the estate, you can walk in there and say that the all-cap name is an estate and that the court has to adhere to that because if they violate that, it still goes right back to the court uh, voluntarily uh, trespassing an estate issue. Oh, but they could get the EIN pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, it's so uh, I'm saying that the, the the national passport is one that we've got in our archives. But if you got an SS4 where you retired the uh, the uh, the uh, Social Security number and you have that estate number, all you need to do is an order of probate, and boom, you're right in there, and they can't do nothing about it. And or you can do the third plan: pay off the bond, no double jeopardy, and be done with it. Your your house is free and clear. Yep. Just by paying off that twenty-five thousand dollar bond. I like that one. All right, so I'll mute out. You guys go ahead. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Real quick, can I have Chris's email address again? L- learn that? law. Learn law at earthlink dot com. Thank you. That's dot net. Dot net. Uh, okay. Learn law at earthlink dot net. Thank you very much.
Okay, so you have any more questions? Okay, that should have given people quite a bit of information, additional yes. information. Uh, we're on two hours, so why don't we just call it quits here? Okay, that's very good. A lot of a lot of good information, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much, Patrick. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and thank you, Chris, for that other information. That'll help uh, some of these people with mortgages. Good. Yep. And uh, hopefully uh, they can get uh, some of the other stuff straightened out before they get themselves into those situations to where they have to go into bankruptcy. Right. Okay. Well, I I think uh, just as the cap off on that, I think that uh, 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 that. Uh, uh, pe- people are getting into new technical or technology of thinking. Uh, they really need to understand it. Either that or just um, make sure you have a guide that makes sure that this thing goes down properly. Because uh, I know so many people out there that are not educated, and all this technology means nothing unless you are. Yeah. And I mean, uh, anybody that's got a mortgage out there right now, they can go and pay this thing off right now hmm. using a money order. Right. Okay. okay. Patrick, do you send the money order to the bank, or is the, does, do yes, you send you it to the bank the and they order, collect it? You would send the money order to who is holding, who who has the charge over that. So you'd send it to them. It would turn around and have to be processed out to the Department of Treasury to make the full settlement. Right. Okay. It's just like a check, okay? It's a treasury money order, okay? It's a postal treasury money order. So you send it to them, they have to deposit it into their account, and then it gets processed out to the treasury to make the settlement. So it's really going from one postmaster, you, out to the postmaster out at the the treasury. Salou, okay? He's the head postmaster in the treasury to make the settlement. Right. And that's what's called for in a post office money order. Going from one postmaster to another to the final postmaster to make the settlement. And you've got the money in your account, but your account is being held by the post office or the postal office treasury. Okay? Okay. Okay. Patrick, one last one last comment. Uh, I want to talk to you tomorrow. I, I discovered something in the Department of Corporation uh, for dissolution of pre-existing accounts, and it uh, it struck me that uh, they actually have forms that you can dissolve any form of a cor- corporation that is under their authority. So I want to talk to you about that tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I'll, we'll compare what I've got here also, okay? With uh, Thank you. the uh, basically the surrendering of uh, those postal certificates, because that's what almost all these things are. Is they're all postal certificates, and if you don't uh, surrender them properly, uh, basically the state is going to claim them. That's like what they're doing with all the uh, certificates of title to the automobiles. They get you to basically give them up. You're not surrendering them properly to get the money back that basically is attached to that uh, certificate. So you you give it up, and basically it's like a voluntarily giving up, and basically they're laying claim to it. And that's why all these senators and congressmen and uh, other employees are getting big retirements. Okay. Okay, go ahead and call it quits, Tom. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks or a lot. Whatever. Next time Everybody. around. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Patrick. Okay. Thank Good night. you. Bye. Bye.
Anybody left on the line? Ah, uh, nobody's here. Who am I talking to then? The guy up in the sticks. <laughs> Hey, Marshall, this is a call that you need to send to me when you get a chance because. I'm going to download it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Laura said she's going to download it early in the morning. I'll let you know if we don't get a chance to do that, but that that was a good call. Yeah, I haven't heard the recording stop, so it's probably still recording. Oh. Well, yeah, you came call through really good. Line. Call me on the home line, or the shop line. Which one, the seven eight, the seven four three one, or? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll talk to you in a minute.
I already talked to him. He's trying to access it so he can stop the recording. That's all he's doing. Oh. I don't talk to him. No, you weren't muted. You weren't muted. Did you do star six 